tore his asshole halfway up his back. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so the the hole itself, which is maybe twenty cents, maybe like that, was was torn so savagely that it the crack went tore his skin. You could see his halfway spine. Up his back. You could yeah. see his spine. Do you, do you understand? Yeah. You, get, you get it? Yeah, I get that. Can you just let us know when we're live, Matt. Welcome well, to the Matthew. Ever since the mic. You've changed since you had your prostate examined. Wholesome is forcing its employees to have their prostate checked. Maybe. Keep that. Maybe. We can keep that in. I got the... We can keep that one in. Uh, so, yeah, don't go work at Wholesome if you uh, don't want uh, your pointer finger and index finger. Have you ever had a prostate check? No. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Really? No. Of course not. Oi. Oi. I did. Is it good? Um... Oh, I don't know what you talk. It was weird. It was real weird, dude. Was it a dude, not a chick? No, it was definitely a man. Yeah, and like, did they put a glove on? Yeah, yeah, but like, it's just it's not. It's not a no, it's very invasive. I felt assaulted. Did you like feel like you might blow? What are you talking about? Huh? Yeah. No, no, it wasn't. It wasn't sexually. That did nothing. Really? Nothing. What about if you close the your opposite? Eye? Close your eyes. Yeah, so I, don't, I still will see. I don't get it. I don't get the whole ass shit. I don't get it. Okay. And and that proved it. I had a strange man. You actually did? Really? Yeah. Oh my God. I didn't know that. Not my prostate. It was something to do with my bowels. Oh, when you were shitting hard. Maybe. I remember that. There's been a lot of fingers. But <laughs> that's just one that I remember. Yeah, okay. But no, of course I've never had that. Also, um, fucking hell, like, it's been wild, bitch. Shit, we've got a video out. Holy shit, we've got the biggest video anyone's ever seen. Dude, like, fucking, you can't I mean. fucking dogged this cunt, cunt. I fucking told you. I said, watch out. Next Monday is going to be a big video. And my God, it's big. It's not that good. It's not that good. It's going good, but it's like, but you'd think, you'd think it'd be more because we're, it's thousands of people drive past these billboards. You'd think it'd be more, but really, it's like, I just shook their foot. More cashing, Mark! <laughs> so it's sort of, yeah, like that. And cut. <laughs> <laughs> If you are watching this because you've seen the billboards, by the way, <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, this is it. This is what we do. We just, it's its weird shit and, and like, yeah. I'm going to piss. We've either made a lot of uh, new viewers or we've lost a few. All right, Matt has gone and done and on this day, he's uh, he used to study journalism, so he knows how to research particular historical events and he's, un it's his, his ability to find out really weird information is uncanny i've never seen anything like it and matt comes in he, he already knows this stuff he doesn't even have to research it he just writes it down and says here this happened on this day however many years ago fuck i'm pissing on the floor so it's like it's it's like it's quite incredible and and it makes me sick as well because like no one should have that much knowledge about such stupid shit in like their fucking wholesome heads it's fucked <laughs> Have you filled it? No, no. I've been pissing on the floor. I've been... Don't! Don't! All right. On this day. All right. So, these are from Matt. Okay. So, on this day in 1949, a shelter collapsed in Ireland, killing a large group of teenagers. Really? Oh, yeah. That happened. I've seen... On this day. That, yeah, okay. All right. That's, that's pretty sick to remind people of, Matt, but it's good. On this day, in my car, there is a star... Wash my mouth, how bizarre. And that's actually a poem from Matt. And he slid it in here because he... Oh, my God. Oh, my God, Matt. Matt, oh, he's, he's, he's hobby writes poetry. He hobby writes it. Does he really? Yes. Yeah. Oh, he's never shown you? If you did, dude, I'll give you money. And so, Matt's gone and done this. What? What is it? Like a... Oh, that's fucked. Okay. All right, Matt, there's your poem. All right, there you go, guys. A bit of poetry from Matthew Brown. My teacher used he to- He should have put bra in there. It would have rhymed well. My teacher used to um, say a poem about me at school when I was in primary school. She would, uh, every time I walked in, she would say, 
Matthew Brown went to town with his bridges upside down. That bitch, man. Whoa, that's sort of, that's rude, right? It's it was sort of like she's paying out your brain. It, it was punishing, yeah. Fuck. I can see why you got into poetry. How old were you? To get back at her. Um, I think I was whatever you are in year five, maybe? Or 15. Year four or five. 15. I was 15, yeah. Uruguay. We what grew up in Uruguay, though. <laughs> What's your, what um what was her name? Let's fucking um talk about her. Mrs. Oh my god. Her name was Miss. I think it was Mrs. Mott, who's actually a lovely lady. Mott. M O T? Yeah, her son was a a oh. Bulls cricket player, actually. All right, this is the last on this day. On this day in 1940, John Travolta crawled out of a slit in the Earth's crust and lived in long grass for the first six years of his existence. Wow. I don't know how you found that up, but that is... It's, it's sort of like... It makes sense. Well, the Scientology, it links up. That's how they were all born. A slit in the Earth's <laughs> crust. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bravo. <laughs> Cheers to that one. That's great. Long grass. <laughs> All right, that is the end of oh, On This Day. The sick. next segment has been renamed to Turn the Volume Up. <laughs> Stop! Oh my God! <laughs> <coughs> You and and basically, in this segment, we just answer questions that have been sent oh in to God. us by you guys. And also, you might notice that Michael's a bit disgruntled in the background is because Matt told me today that I can turn his headset volume up. Is that how you did it? Nah, in front of me. So, you, you guys just it. witnessed a classic Marty and Michael prank. Marty and Michael prank. All right. So, uh, where are the questions, Cliff? Okay, this is from Lyft, and he has said, why does Bosley look like he actually has a mind of his own? This is my, I can tell you. <laughs> look, I'm not answering that. You, he said before that he'd just go defense mode on the Bosley question, because I mentioned there's a question about his dog. Are you saying that? Marty tells me very, very frequently that Bosley is either half, he's half human and ape. So he's in between that, which is us. He doesn't refer to him as a dog. He treats him better than anyone. Bosley is Marty, but look, look. if Marty could swap bodies with Bosley, he would. Look, hundred percent. It's fucked. He doesn't. Bosley gets full Bosley's, VIP. Bosley, Bosley. I don't know why you. Bosley, Bosley is a normal dog. Okay, he's just a normal dog. He lives a normal life, and like we just we we like I, I, the relationship is, is between a, a, is an owner and a normal dog. Is it's it's a relationship similar to that? Look, yeah, like yeah, you know. When we used you know. to share a room, we had to close the door because Bosley needed every night. Everything has to be open so Bosley can come in and out. Is the it's just the rules. Even today, my, his drinking water, the aircon's on. We leave the aircon on for him. Our water comes inside. He slips at his fucking bucket of water. Gets sh water everywhere, and it's just that's Bosley. Look, it's none fine. of he's none, not a dog to you. None of that is he is, is, if is you, true. But but if it were true, the reason would be like it would be because he speaks speaks to his owner. Like he talks. He'll English. know exactly what Bosley's feeling. And it's just, it's fucked. He can like, they're like tele telepathic. Tele it's telekinesis. That's what I imagine would only result in that sort of behavior, which is not what I do. Bosley is just a, treated as a normal dog. Just so happens he's around a lot when we're filming. Okay. It's fine. He's the medic. You made him the medic. Yeah, it's because he knows. You trust him no, with everything. He's a normal dog. If you could make him, he'd be a fucking banker. It's he, the reason why you could put a billboard. He on licked your toes t dry. Oh, he's dry done. after you ripped them. Yeah, yeah, he is a good healer. Medic. Yeah. It was Matt Brown's birthday on the weekend, and everyone sent him dicks. Continue that. Continue it. It's it's really nice. So please keep that going. <sighs> Thank you. This is from Matt underscore Bussa five. five. 
Would this be a business you'd partake in? Since you two are already the life of the party, you offer a service where you go party with your fans. The cost of this service would cover all of your trip expenses, plus however much you need for profit. I do this free, like, often just with people that are in the right place at the right we'll time. We'll go out to lunch with some friends and Marco will stay and do bags with fans until the next morning. Don't agree so with that. So, this already happens. And they don't give him any money. He gives them money from our business account and says, go, go. I know there's been bushfires and shit, man. It's Here. giving back. So, Michael will get lots and lots of money out of the ATMs and just give it to them and, say, and tell them to go. Yeah, bags of, like, they're sandbags for flooding. Yeah. To buy sandbags for flooding. That so, is a good idea. Yeah, it's not bad. Like, how much would you reckon we'd charge if we did it? Five years ago, we would have charged $100,000. Bentley with double Y Fucking dot one. Um, has Bosley ever gotten into a fight with another dog? Not a fight fight, but there's been... Um, Bosley knows that, uh, that uh, there is a zero fight tolerance in um, our pack. And, uh, but he, there has been, you know, raising him up. He's, he's a big dog. He, um, he was sometimes at dog parks. There are fucking scum fuckwits. Yeah, God. Who train don't train their dogs. Train your dogs. Who don't train their dogs, have no control over their behavior at fucking dog parks. Nah. You may as well not even fucking be there. You may as well have just unleashed a killer wolf and fucked off to Coles. Cause that's what happens. Dude, yeah. So sometimes there were, a dog would bite Bosley first, and and I could, and when he was younger, he would react, and he would get. I could see he would his his jowls would go up, and he'd be baring his teeth, and he'd go after the dogs that have just bit him. But usually, when another dog goes for Bosley, I, you can usually see it before it happens. I'd start yelling and screaming. So when Bosley turned around to defend himself. Bosley thought he was getting into trouble for defending himself. And and to this day, sometimes I just wish I let him go. I should have just not fucking said anything and let him grab those little fucking nippy bitch dogs by the back of the fucking neck. Like rat. Shake them. Shake them to death. Snapping their necks and ripping their flesh from their muscles and tossing them aside for their dumb fucking owners to come across. When they're picking up their shit. <laughs> Bravo. That was fucking good. Because, yeah, it's fucking annoying seeing someone own a dog and the dog is just like a shit kid. Fair so, enough. If you that, uh, It happens. Sometimes you get a shit dog. Don't take it to a dog park. Leave it at home or walk it on a leash. Yeah, I think. Marty hates it. And I see it every day because I go for walks with him. Can you tell the story of the me. little girl at the dog park and Bosley? It was I wasn't even here for this. This was a, a story from a roommate. Bosley was about a year old. We just <coughs> we just changed her dress and and moved into this house with you know some other people that ended up becoming very close friends. But one of the people that I lived with, Pepper, she went to the dog park with Bosley when he was only a year old and fucking fucked in the head. And there was a little girl there with pigtails. And Bosley used to just hate humans. Loved dogs, but just would hate humans. Really? And, and, I never knew this. And she was running along and her pigtails were bouncing around and apparently Bosley ran up behind her and grabbed one of the pigtails and pushed her over. Have you always lived in Brisbane? No. I was like 13. You were 15, 16? Yeah. 15, 16. What's the closest you've ever been to death? Fuck, there's been like five times for me. But yeah, the the storm water yeah, story, storm water which go to our, probably, yeah. I think our first ever podcast is where that story comes out. And then for you, well, I guess I remember our nights together when we lost control. There were some, there were some OD moments, maybe, and yeah, I don't, I don't know. It's, it's hard to. Depends on how, yeah. It's hard to say. Oh, I nearly died then because you don't really know. Yeah, but you don't really fuck. know how close you were. Like that, you know, when we're overseas, sometimes we. You were in, so close in, in Prague. Fucking, in Prague, we you were going to jump into the over water. onto ice water like this. But we did ma- jump. I remember we jumped you into over the, the water. You were over the railing on the ice. 
He's trying to walk across these ice caps at this like yeah, so you just, uh, river so underneath you don't know. the main river. And the ice, if you got broke the ice and got sucked under, the river's going, you're dead. It's just automatic. I but had we to didn't convince you to remember, come, I I to convince got, you to come back. I remember we you all You were like, no, I'm going to do it. I remember we all got in the water. I remember being super cold and running back to the to our hostel. But yeah, so you just don't know. I could have been centimeters from death. I stopped you. I stopped you from going further, dude. Seriously, you were so keen. You stopped me and from being... Dumb. And then we went back and I licked a dead crow. Yeah. That's yeah. what enticed you to come back. <laughs> dead, Fuck, that dead was crow scary. licking. It's my like, it's my Achilles heel. <laughs> <laughs> and the last question is from... Coxinormus69. Coxinormus, that's good. Would you ever start vlogging? Yes. We spoke about this. Yes, it will come about eventually. We just need more time and we need... We need like staff. Yeah, like we just... There's like... We got... Look. All right, listen. I'm going to let you guys in on a little secret here. All right? Listen up real close and real tight. So, push your ear right to the microphone steps. Right? We get out a video a week for Facebook, YouTube... And Instagram, we're one of the only influencers who do that at the moment. Every single week. We, for how long? Like two years. Over. A week. We've gotten a video out. We get, we need two videos a week for our website. So, we usually have an extended cut. And now we're starting to make website exclusive content. www.universityofmichael.com. I read you see. Over, over, it's nearly five hours of content that no one has seen before unless you unless get on you- there. And um, that, the podcast, right? This is, it's not, this is like we film for it. It takes a while to set up, to film, to edit, to send off. Upload it. TikTok now, brand deals, bigger projects. So it's sort of, it, it gets like, and it's relentless. We have to keep doing it. So vlogging will happen but when we need to free up a chunk of our life first next question even though i said last question on that one to ha 2004 <laughs> what is your favorite football team and what is michael's favorite football player great question <laughs> very relevant question great question well it depends on what football <laughs> well uh, lee, lee okay, michael's go. a darren lockyer boy if so we go nrl afl there's rugby union and then what there's a, like soccer. english soccer like fucking <laughs> there's football. a ruby union nfl <laughs> ruby union um which one i'd choose english football because it's like it makes the most sense What's english football when they so the circle ball. one soccer actual uh, football s- soccer <laughs> i guess americans will get that one but nrl it doesn't matter who wins Rugby league, it doesn't matter who wins. AFL, it doesn't matter who wins. Soccer, I might get on board with. Like, it's just at least I can watch it. For me, that's what I I would go. Next segment has been renamed to. Coming in through the back door. And like this a is seven out of ten. A uh, seven. segment where we just uh, open PO box shit. It's called the PO one box shit. Can't fuck it up, yeah. And people send in letters and cylinders, cylinders full of probably like time for a week petrified shit. And we open them live on air. Hmm. Rove listens. Rove McManus, give me a job. <laughs> Rove McManus. <laughs> Don't <laughs> stop. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Everyone's having fun. I'm shaking Michael's dick as he tries to piss in a small slim bottle. Mm. <laughs> I need a bucket. Possibly got scared to shit from that, yeah. dude. Yeah. Oh, my God. All right, we have a letter. We have a letter. It says, uh, Dear Marty and Michael, <laughs> Guys, I'm a really big fan of your videos. Keep doing what you're doing. Also, give Michael a haircut. Sincerely from Mark. All right, well, Mark's mentioned that maybe I should give you a haircut. So. I swear that happened. Don't! <laughs> oh, no. I don't like the cut yet. Put that, on there. Put that towel under there, dude, because it's just going to get worse. It's already, like, fucking His covered. waste spilling is being sick. <laughs> All right, we have another letter here. It might not be a letter, but we'll have a look. Oh, shit. Always, I'm always a bit hesitant after that person sent us shit. Anthrax? 
That's what I worry about. Oh, dude, I can't even get it in the bottle now. All right, so we have a letter and some pictures still uh, from this person, and uh, we know this guy. We've met him at a oh, um, at a, I can't even the inflatable the factory. I'm just pissing on the towel because it's too hard. <laughs> you scaring me, dude. <laughs> you fucking give me fear. A and towel, now I can't a, piss a in the towel has become a urinal for Michael. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right, so we know this guy. His name is Bryce, I think. Yeah, he's, want, uh, he's given his Instagram. We'll give him a little cheeky little plug here. Aussie underscore carts 99. And uh, we've met him. It's Bryce, remember? I remember, yeah, from Inflatable Factory. He's a yeah. lovely man. And he, he's, oh, I think, I think the first person to get this tattooed on him. Look. Oh, dude. You know you've made it when, when a fucking rad, rad dude, dude has tattooed, tattooed your, your name, name on, on his, his neck. Arm. It's not his neck. <laughs> yeah, no. All right, yeah, Bryce, that's like, it's fucked, but I dig that shit. I dig that shit hard, bitch. And he's also sending, a, bless him, he's sending a picture of a bull. I don't fuck balls, but I fuck what balls are around balls, man. I fuck this shit around the balls, cunt. So fucking, <laughs> this still gets me off. You've had sex with and their he's, partners. He's written a letter. Uh, let me read this. Look what I'm up to now, yeah, everyone. It's covered in piss. Like, it's not even My hands are so wet. wet. So sorry. wet. I'm sorry. I'm very Jeez. sorry. I never get to hear that. Okay. Oh. This is a letter from... Matt! Ma- <laughs> <laughs> I flicked it at him. I flicked the wee on him. Hi guys, it's me again, Aussie underscore carts 99. How are yous? I'm good. Just got back from South Stradbroke Island. It was fun. How was Christmas? I got drunk on Christmas Day and Boxing Day. I went on a five-day event and it was epic. Wish you guys were there. And I can't wait for Marty and Michael for 2020. I've got some video ideas for yous both. If yous want, I'll send them to yous. And I've got a picture off a cow for Marty to hang on a wall. And I can't... I can't to see yous again and catch up. We'll always remember we are the best. Hashtag we are the best. Or you can prank and call me and he's got his number. Fucking Bryce, mate. You bloody know, it, mate. You fucking know. It. Send those ideas through, dude. Send those ideas through. You know, we're we always you. anyone listening, send us ideas on Instagram, Facebook. We can't we don't we choose not to think anymore. We just always just pick ideas that so we don't do any original shit anymore. We just pick ideas that have already been done and say, Oh yeah, let's do that tonight. I've lost the feeling of touch. Yeah. He's the tips of his fingers are dead. He can't feel anything because he's got nerve damage it's from hard to too wait. much MDMA use. Hey he's, he's fine like he, I haven't told him this. I, I Googled it. It's not good. Like it's the beginnings of like only people with like really severe diabetes get this sort of a symptom. Like and MS, he's already he said got a, before. We've just- well, that too, but also diabetes. So, whatever the case, really? some serious diseases are you in spoke his body. to me about that before, actually. Worming through his system and just that he can't feel his fingertips. Come on. that's Diabetes, you don't have to be fat cancer. to get it. That's correct. Fuck you. I don't put little fucking black omens on you. Do you want me to start black magic again? Michael, we've talked about this. If you start that again, I'm leaving and I'm changing my name. Those are your two options, all right? I'm not I'm not sitting there listening to you curse people again. Michael used to be a witch, all right? I'm not going to say any more. You can sell it to the Daily Mail, whatever you want to do. Michael is a witch. That's it. Move on. This is a cylinder sent in by Kaif Shim Pa. That's a lie. That's a Staples lie. Staples on that so good at this side. Watch this. He wanted this! He wanted this! Ah! Oh my god! Dude, if that was Corona or Anthrax, we'd be fucked. It might be. God damn it, now I have to- I don't even have a vacuum. I don't own a vacuum. This could be what Corona looks like. It was meant to go like yeah. this up. Oh. He, he didn't account for the fact that we are dumb as fuck. <laughs> And then I tried to open it from this end, and then Michael realized to pull it that way. <laughs> Jokes on you, stick stick it, stick it, Which is also the name of the next segment where we prank call some people that you have sent in. All right, here we have our first uh, prank call. This is, was sent in um, by someone via Instagram and keep this shit coming. This is how detailed the DMs should be. When you send in a prank idea, make them like this. Yeah, no. He no, sent no. the number, then he said, 
My good mate Will, full name, I'm not, I'm not going to say it now, but he's given his full name, had a debt that he owed to Centrelink like five years ago. I reckon I'm pretty sure he's just got done paying it last year. I was thinking you could call him and say that it hasn't been paid in full and then slap the cunt with a ridiculous late fee. So he's given me a very good scenario. I'm a Centrelink worker. That's what I am. I do that. I do that when we're not filming. He didn't know that. He didn't know that. I do it for like to extra income so I can pay for billboards. Hello, Dick. Hello, may I please speak to a Willem McConnell? Yes. Oh, great. Mate, I'm, uh, I'm Troy Mandy and I'm from the Australian Taxation Office. Uh, just just wondering if you have a... Pardon? From the Australian Taxation Office. Okay, yep, yep. I was just wondering if you have a spare 10 minutes just to discuss an account that we have open at the moment about you. Um, it'd be good if you call me back later, Matt. How much later are we talking here, Will? Um, probably an hour or two. Just, just that our records here show that you've been dodging our calls for a couple of months? Okay. Well, let, let's talk about it now then. Sorry? Great, thank you. So, um, I understand that you were receiving uh, payments from... Uh, Centrelink, uh, a while, little while ago. Can you elaborate on that at all? Um, yeah, yeah, I was. Basically, the ATO has done a little bit of a little bit of an audit of of Centrelink, and and, and you know there are multiple accounts that pop up during this time, and yours was one of them that. Um, and, you know, and then we look into it, and, and we and, and it's you know highly uh, scrutinised, and, and basically we've uh, seen that that you still owe another six thousand five hundred and fourteen dollars. Huh. No way. Okay. Yeah. So uh, you know, obviously, it's always a bit of a shock to people. <laughs> you know, I'm not. You know, I'm not here to pull the the wool over your eyes, but but you, we can lock you into a bit of a a long term um, payment plan where you will barely notice it. You know, I'm talking okay. maybe you know a thousand dollars, you know, every two weeks. So so five hundred bucks a week for the next what three months, and and it's you know, and 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 you're you're all clean, but. You know, you do have options. Legally, I have to tell you that if you refuse this, um, that we will sell your debt to a debt collector. And, you know, I'm not I'm not sure if you've experienced any uh, debt collectors, but some of the uh, some of the debt collectors are quite uh, annoying. And, you know, they'll send people to your house. They'll they'll leave, you know, they'll leave disturbing Um, pictures in your mailbox, all sorts of weird stuff. But, you know. I I know what it's like, man. But, um... I'm a salesman for my job. I feel as though maybe this is a sales call. I don't think that it is. Can you conf- how can you confirm to me that it is real? I mean, I do this for my job every day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, of to- course, I'm suspicious. <laughs> totally but, understand. Totally understand. So, how do you usually receive uh, information from? Uh, my gov and from the government in general is okay. it, is is it via is it via email is it via uh, letters is it is it via text message because basically once you've once you've signed up for new start your all of your information is 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 logged and and basic we we can choose a few different ways you choose primarily how you would like to be contacted and then we go through you know your primary method of contact down to the secondary and 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 now we're calling you so uh, so I'm certain that you would have received emails and letters to okay. your address Okay. And yeah, it's only yeah. now, it's only now yeah. that, you know, it's it's the third step down that, that, mean, is, that someone needs to call. I houses and it is possible that it has been sent out to me and well, there I you have go. changed numbers and stuff like that. So, Definitely what happened. Yeah, that does make sense. Definitely. Um, is there a possibility that you can call me back at a certain time? Yeah, look, look, Will, Will I'm, I'm going to level with you, mate. Look, so, the, the ATO has certain... Um, Permissions, I guess, and, and and basically we have your uh, bank account and 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 everything on file because of your Centrelink payments. We can see how much money is going in, we can see how much is going out. So, um, uh, you know, we we can reschedule a call, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and you can yep. come come into Centrelink. But at the end of the day, money will start to be. Uh, 
pulled from your account straight to Centrelink, whether you okay. give uh, permission or not. And that's just something that you sign when you sign up for Centrelink. And again, not, not, not many people yeah. really know about it. But yeah, you know, if you don't have the money in your account, there will, you know, people will come around to your house and, and start taking your furniture. Do, do you know, it, it's sort of at that sort of level. Do you know what I mean? With just well, just because coronavirus, out, so coronavirus. <laughs> it's, not, it's not really a problem for me. I understand that. Um, but... Yeah, look, if you'd like to give me a call back at, Have say, 1 o'clock months. tomorrow, um, I can be with the solicitor and I can, we can work all this out, I suppose. Uh, um, so, so I'll just, I'll just, I'll just, no worries. Well, I'll just fill you in what it looks like from my end. So, basically, I have to write down now whether we've agreed that you're going to repay the amount or not. So, j just going from our current conversation, I can't say that you, we. I can confirm that you are going to pay it back. So, once I've done that, it's sort of out of my hands, and then it sort of goes to debt collectors, and and the uh, okay. and it's quite a quick process within usually three to four business days there will be some large uh men that that, that could uh, you know rock up at your so house what, and what start taking your I've, I've, furniture i just need to agree verbally that i am willing to pay this debt Is yes well we get the agreement verbally and then the ato yeah. starts taking money out of your account whether you sort of uh like it or not you, you know it's it's once once we have the verbal yes then it's sort of things happen very quickly but it, it's over it. quickly you know what i mean we, we will take a certain amount out you know and and within three months debt will be gone and, and you're back to living on your normal life okay so you're saying if i don't agree to it right now then basically you're gonna get back um it gets handed over to the debt collectors instantly. Yeah, Very quickly. Contact. Within, but by the end of this phone call, the the uh, the job gets sent so. electronically to uh, yeah. to, to our, our debt collector. Yes. Uh, Some clients. Look, mate, I just I Some don't think have I can been do it. Um, Some clients have been raped. Just because I don't have any paperwork in front of me right now. <laughs> um, if, uh, like I said, if you can give me a call back. Tomorrow, we can work something out when I'm with my solicitor. Look, uh, mate, it, it wouldn't be me personally calling you back tomorrow, but I'm okay. sure that you will receive a visit um, tomorrow at some stage, but I can't guarantee that it will... Well, That's fine. Like I said, we, we have your address on file, we have your bank accounts, and you will so you will make those repayments. Do you understand? Like it, you will make those repayments. You are employed now. You are making money. You will repay the amount that was given to you when you didn't have a fucking job. <laughs> uh, Christ. Say sorry. Dude, I'm say sorry. sorry. Don't tell him to say sorry. You, you need I, to apologize. I will apologize. <laughs> How big is your dick? This was skilled. <laughs> Let me go on for a while. Oh, thank God we did because I wasn't sure. I didn't know whether you did. He know? I don't know. How how far in did you were you suspicious that this might be a prank call from Marty and Michael? Oh my God! Oh, he just got I it. Like I was like right at the end, bro. That was good as because. I fully did have Centrelink, <laughs> and now I'm making <laughs> and I knew they were coming back for me. Yeah. <laughs> you made uh, sensitive. And I'm just fucking going with it. Dude, you did well. <laughs> you did well. You handled yourself well. If I actually wanted your money, like, you did good. You don't, yeah, you, you're free. You, you full business. such a good phone manner, and I've always wanted to say this to you. <laughs> Thanks, you dude. What do you going. say? Yeah, dude. You were, yeah, that you did good. I did. I did really good. Like I was very, very convincing, dude. I couldn't have. I couldn't. I can't talk right now after what we just did before. Yeah, I, like I was Centrelink. Yeah, dude. Yeah, I did see how much that. Did Brody pay you to do this? Nothing. So good. He told me that this was gonna happen. And I oh, did he? It. Oh, fuck. He did. Fuck, Brody. Well, that's Don't. Why you were so chill? <laughs> but it's good that he did because it worked. Yeah, but what if he hadn't said done? shit, nah, then nah, you would have got more that, panic. That was good. That was good. Oh, dude, well, fucking, you did good. And, um, yeah, this will be on the podcast. And um, we love you and you don't owe any money to Centrelink. Fuck those dogs. Fuck them Fuck to death. Fuck those dogs. 
Exactly. I'm bringing a fucking pay it anyways. I told you. I don't think my pay. Yeah. Come around and get my shit. <laughs> if, they, if they made you pay that, you would go back on Centrelink to pay that. Hey, let's tax That's the exactly poor. right. I'm a fucking criminal. <laughs> <laughs> All right, dude. We love you. Thank you for talking to us, and we'll fucking see you tomorrow. <clears throat> see you later, boys. See Bye you, buddy. Dude. Bye. Michael's been working on a little project that he'd like to present to the public now. He's been, it's taken about an hour of, it's all bladder and it's we and he's put a bottle on it. He's just put that there. We are the best. We're getting better, I reckon. No, it's happened. Oh my God. We've got a letter before we say one letter left before we fucking tee dogs who fucking play in here, brother. Let me show you you what's going on. me again. All right. We, we are, are the, the best. best. We're the, the best. best. We're the back and this is the best podcast you've ever listened to. Ow. Go and show everyone and say, ah! My next week. <laughs>